Hello there, welcome to another week in our garden. Getting chilly now, the autumn's pulling in a little. I see the uh, the horse chestnut, the conker tree, the leaves have turned on that and beginning to fall already. That's that's the sign of the autumn. I've got some swallows in the old stable there and they're just rearing their second batch of young. So if you hear a lot of twerking, it's, uh, it's the swallows coming in and out, trying to get these babies ready to fly south. We've had a lot of swallows above us, and I think they're the ones that's moving south, but my resident ones are a bit behind this year with the second brood. So good luck to them, out they're away soon, and then I can have my stable back. Now we're down at the pumpkins and squashes. Now this time of year the leaves of the pumpkins get covered in mildew and they look awful and it's not doing the plant any good. Now as soon as these squashes are ready we'll harvest them and clean them ready so the girls can have them for their party. But at the moment they're still, they're still growing a little so we'll take the mildewed leaves off. As you can see here the mildew is really taking up on this pumpkin. So I'll take all those leaves off. It's just in case that's a weed there not. We'll take that out. We'll just take these off. Just clean them up. Male flowers can go now, we don't want no more pumpkin. Remember, don't put these on your compost heap with all this mildew on it. Won't do your compost heap any good. You can be quite brutal now. That one wants to come off. Look. Male flowers will get In fact, that runner can come off, look, because you don't want any more. Just the job of cleaning up a little bit now. Bottles have been very, very successful this year. I was able to come down and water without splashing water everywhere. That's a jolly good idea. If you had any sort of leafy plant, you could do that and you'll know exactly where to water, even the flowers, etc. Right, I'll just take these off so the white ones can get a little bit of sun, okay? There's one or two with mildew on, but we just want to give them some light. That's a bad one there, not take that one off. That one as well. Male flowers take them. Now as we go into autumn we get the the damp misty weathers that's what will bring the mildew onto your pumpkins and squashes. It looks a bit drastic and it is very time consuming but it's well worth doing and it keeps the garden looking nice as well which is always a good thing. Okay so I'll do a bit more and then we'll go on and I think we're going to pick some apples today. I've taken quite a few of the leaves off now they're feeling rather nice. If, if you want to know when they're ready, if you just pop your thumbnail in and if it leaves an indentation, they're not ready. That one's not ready yet. I'll just clean my hands and then we'll go and pick the apples. I did try one this morning and I lifted it and it came off. So we really need to get those in. They're very good storing apples, so I don't want to leave them and get them knocked about on the floor. As you can see we've got a lovely crop this year and there's none weighing the branches down and dragging on the floor like we had last year. These look well. Now if you to test them if you just put your hand under them and lift them and if it comes away like that it's ready. Very nice little apples these are. Now these apples are called Spartan. They're a dessert apple 
very very sweet and they store exceptionally well we'll be using these till well after Christmas I'll store them in the shed I'll show you just put them on newspaper and I'll show you them in there very nice apples we'll get them picked and show you how they look in the basket and there's the apple crop off this one tree as you can see absolutely beautiful apples there's not a single maggot hole in them at all that means that the grease band has worked wonders it's always worth putting your grease bands on that's the apples now looking across there's three or four plums we ought to pick while we're here before the wasps get them so I'll pop those in the basket as well we've picked what few plums there were the late frost has really taken the taken all the blossom off so we've now not so many plums this year it also took all the pears we did have two left but they fell off and the wasps got them now today we're going to harvest the rest of the celery I've just uncovered the celery it's done very well this year we've been eating quite a bit on salads etc and it really has done well but it's time now I need to harvest it because I really need this bedroom for getting ready for the brassicas the celery that's behind me that will be a while yet it's just beginning to swell up so we'll leave that but I might be able to take the first arch off and take it back one and get this ground ready the ground is so soft and is digging beautiful at the moment I don't want to leave it for any length of time so it gets too waterlogged and then I'll have to wait so I'm taking advantage of the soil in the condition it's in these out and show you them harvested it's just the same as we did before we dig them up cut the tops and bottoms off there you are that's the rest or what's left of the celery now harvested as you can see absolutely beautiful stems very very nice they are they'll go for blanching and freezing and maybe maybe a couple to eat over the, this next weekend those who like to know the names of the product the one with the red on was called starburst and this green one green sleeves very very nice eaters both of them and both cook well as well now if you're a connoisseur of the celery and you like to grow them on to blanch them in the garden now's the time to put your collars on or well, in the old days you used to earth them up but they used to get a lot of dirt in them so it's if you can get the proper collars and put those on it'll lighten the bottom of your celery for you right Diane's just told me she'd like a couple of the leeks so I'll nip and fetch the fork and she's asked for some of the brussels because she's seen some in the supermarket but she can't have, I'm not letting her have those yet we'll have those <laughs> later near Christmas we'll just put the fork in and try and loosen it I have actually seen where you can actually purchase now a two prong pronged fork this would be ideal for this job I'll have to put that on the Christmas list I used to have a beautiful post hole in spade for lifting these but I think I lent it to somebody and it never come back they're deep and I don't want to lift too much I don't want to spoil the next two so let's see if we can get them out yeah There you are, look. just take them rubbish off. I'm just going to press this really back down as firm as I can. Harvesting now, don't forget these are very sharp so be careful with them. Back of the blade, just push those off. Leave the dirt in the garden, we don't want to take that up. It's 
smells beautiful. Then we just take the root off, take it off at an angle and go round, that's the easiest way with it, look. You see? Feel start field harvesting, you just chop it straight through. Now the tops, I always take mine off at an angle, like that, and then like that. It just looks a bit better. The outer sleeve, I just pull one off. Just makes it a bit cleaner look as you go up. A bit more presentable. There you are. That's one. I just dig two more up so there's a decent amount and then we'll show you when we've harvested them, okay? While we were harvesting the leeks, Diane says she wouldn't mind a swede as well. So we'll harvest a, a swede for her. I'm going to take this one in the middle. There she comes. Look at that. Beautiful lot. Absolutely beautiful. You just cut the roots away and cut the top off. I'll do it over that side because I don't want the leaves in with these. So we'll just take these off, make them nice and clean. There you go. Clean them up. They've grown very, very fast these weeds, so they'll be very, very tender. Back of the knife, don't forget for scraping the dirt off. Just check it round there. There you are, it's a lovely clean sweet now. And then take the top off straight through the top. There you go. That is one nice sweet. Fast grown, it'll be beautiful and tender that one. Now we're going to pick the last pick of the raspberries, I think. I think we'll take this pick and then I'm going to take the net off and let it dry up, up top first, then roll it up and pop it in the shed because really I'll get in some quite damp weather now. So if I can get Diane past the Brussels sprouts. Here we are in the fruit cage. Now looking at the raspberries, even though we're going to pick now, there'll be still quite a few to come. But what's to come, we're going to leave for the wild birds. We're going to take the net off and let them come and get it. They've been trying to get in all summer, so now they can get in. The other reason mainly is the damp, cold, misty weather we're getting now. The raspberries aren't going to last very long. They'll, they'll soon get mildew and rot off. There's quite a few actually showing mildew now. We'll have a good pick, take the top off and let the wildlife in. Okay, I'll probably just fence off at these tunnels and let the chickens in as well. They like to come in this time of year and have a scratch about and probably eat all the tops of the strawberries. We'll pick them into the little fruit baskets and then show you what we've picked for the final time. We've got some raspberries this year, okay. We've finished picking the raspberries. As you can see, we've got a lovely basket full, well, half full, but it's a big basket. Quite a few there. That'll last a few puddings, and I think some are going to the freezer. We've had a question about blueberry pruning. Now, blueberries are best pruned when they're dormant, but I have one or two dead branches on them, so we'll go across and have a look anyway. But Here's the blueberries. Now these are no. these are still in leaf, so we won't prune them now. We need to lose the leaves and be fully dormant when we do it. Now when you do prune them, when they are dormant, if you remove one or two, not too much of the older stems, you'll get new stems coming up. And it's these new stems that carry the fruit for next year. You can always tell because the fruit buds are a little bit fatter when they come than the leaf buds. So prune to promote new growth. 
but don't prune hard. If you prune hard, you'll lose the next year's fruit. Why I've come to the blueberries is because we've got some dead branches look, here. So I'm going to follow that right back and prune it off just below soil level. You can. There you are. I don't know why it's dying. It's definitely got the spin rubbing a bit there. There's perhaps that what's done it, but I can't see no other reason. When you come to prune and you're taking the older branches out, you can soon tell the difference. This is obviously a new branch, green. The older branches are taking on a woody look, as you see. So when it's nice and dormant and you come to take these shoots out, take them right off at the bottom and just thin it a little bit and that will promote new growth for the following year. Which are these. Which There's your new growth coming up for next year, you see there. But at the moment, no pruning on these bushes. See where they've crossed over there and they're rubbing. We either stake it away from one another or cut one out or the other. But that's as and when, not now. You should get a nice autumn colour like that coming on them. And then I think the autumn colours that do come are like a bonus. I love to see them. The other thing you can do this time of year for your blueberries is to give them a top up, if you can, with some good ericaceous compost. Try to avoid fresh manures etc because that's too strong for blueberries. A good, a good dressing of some good ericaceous compost and they'll be quite happy. Now while we're in the fruit cage and we're just passing the gooseberries, another thing to watch out for, especially this time of year, is the autumn. Is on your gooseberries you can get mildew. It's called American mildew, you sometimes you get it on your gooseberries. If you see any, cut that whole branch out and burn it. Okay? Luckily we're clear. Right, I'll take this away and make sure it's burnt. I don't know why it's time. We're just going to pop in the shed and have a look at the onions because they'll need cleaning up a little bit and then ready for the stringing next week. So we'll go and have a look at those, okay? Right, I've had a good harvest this week. Got some lovely apples they're going to store and mature through over Christmas, be beautiful they were. A few plums, enough for a crumble, they'll be nice. The celery, very very nice for the table and for freezing. Most of this will go for the freezer now for the winter. Some lovely leeks, first pick of the leeks, nothing wrong with those. A swede, the swede has grown very fast so that will be beautiful. A little bit more celery, always nice the raspberries, make a lovely pudding. There, some of those will go for freezing as well. <laughs> we're in the shed now and we're sorting through the onions, cleaning them up a little. Not, not fully clean but cleaning them up a little and then rejecting some that are not so good for storage but can go up and be used immediately. So I'll just show you what we've got. Now we've got some very large onions and some normal onions. I don't know why they've done better but there's quite a few of them looking round. So what I'm going to do would we'll start with the smaller one. As you can see I've done quite a few already. I just whip my hands up the top. I'm feeling for very very wet if these are very very wet they need to go back and dry out a bit more and then I just peel anything that's loose and then I get the scissors and I trim the roots off okay and then I put my hand so as a measure and I just snip that off Anything that's really loose take off, anything that's not loose I leave. At this stage I'm really more concerned with the quality of the onion and that's fine. So that now goes over there. These are the ones I've cleaned ready 
and these will be strung up next week we just need I put them on these trays to let the air get to the bottoms as well but there's quite a few there I should do them all like this to see where the anything really loose I take that off don't go into a lot of depth. Just have a good feel of that. Put my hand on, just take that off. That's fine, one or two bits. And then I'll show you in a moment the ones I have going to put for using, not storage. Then just turn it over and give it a haircut. There you are. For now, that's fine. Now this one, I don't know if you can see that there's a split across the bottom, not for storage. Okay, so that would go on one side to be used. Likewise, this one is still showing a bit of green. When I put my hand, I can feel the greenness in the stem as well. So that one can go for using as well. Not very good for storage. These four, perfectly all right, beautiful onions, a bit on the small side for storing, so they'll go up for use. This one, I'll just clean it while I talk to you. It's a funny old shape, this one, just give it a haircut. It looks a little bit like a shallot. But it's supposed to be the same variety as that one. So there's a little bit of variation I think there in the set. So we'll use this one straight away. This one will send for storage. There's a few big ones as you can see. I don't think I'm going to be able to put these on the strings. So I'll have to find another way of presenting them for you next week. And fine onions, lovely onions, but a little bit too big to go on, on the string. I shall need ropes to hold those up. I'll just clean a couple more so you can see what I'm doing. Push my hand through, feeling for damp more than anything. And especially if they, they've got a bit of neck rock, you'll feel it now when you put your hand through them. Take that off. You can see that some of the skins can come off, look, just where it's a bit dirty underneath. Not too much though at this stage. If it looks loose it can come off. And we'll clean them up again when we when we put them on the string. So just give it a little air cut around the bottom. You can see here where the skins are coming off a little. Just take those off if you want. It's a messy old job cleaning these onions, but it's got to be done. Don't forget, if it doesn't look right, use it now. Don't try and store it. And there'll be no problems then. I shall work my way through all these onions. There's quite a few. And I shall grade them ready for stringing next week. The other thing is, for next week, we'll do some softwood cuttings next week. We'll go around the geraniums and fuchsias, see if we can get a few extra plants for next year. That'll be your filming for today. I shall stay down and do my onions. Better put those down, haven't I? I shall finish these off, get them ready for stringing next week. I'll have to get some, make sure we've got some cord as well to do them on. That'll be all for today. I think it's getting a bit overcast now. And then later in the week we'll go up and harvest those, the mint, ready for drying and making mint sauce, etc. for the winter. Hello there. Friday today. This morning we've had quite a heavy shower of rain. So we won't be putting the cabbages in that we were going to do it's far too sticky to go on the garden until it dries out a little bit and then we'll see if we can pop down and do it so it won't be this week you'll see them next week 
Now we're starting in the greenhouse and as you can see I have now removed all of the leaves from my tomatoes. This will make them what's left ripen a bit quicker, there's not much left anyway. Obviously now I've removed the leaves, I've reduced the watering right down to just keeping them moist. Cucumbers, I've just removed one or two leaves that didn't look very good and I'm keeping those going as long as possible. They're still, still got cucumbers coming on them as you can see. So we'll keep those going until till the, the day length shuts those down. The peppers, as you can see there's still quite a few fruits on them to ripen. There's quite a strength in the sun still so they will ripen. I can't see as yet any more flowers on them so I think what we've got will be the end of the peppers. I will keep them as long as possible in this little greenhouse to see how long they can last. Sometimes you can get them through the winter and you'll get huge plants next year. Now as we said earlier in the week we're going to harvest the mint. Now this will go, some will be dried and some will go into making mint sauce etc for the winter because mid-winter as you know the plants all shut down and we'll not be able to keep them going. We've got a good crop so we'll harvest it. Now this is the mint that we grew. If you remember we chopped it in half and fed it and grow, we've grown it back up again. This actual mint is, you keep buying it from the supermarket and every now and again you get one that really is nice. When we found one we actually propagated that one and so we really really do like this particular mint there perfume coming off it. it's absolutely beautiful now what I'm going to do I'm going to cut the top completely off put it in the truck if you're not going to do all of it immediately remember to stand it in some rainwater and it will stay nice and fresh well now cut it off and put it in the truck it's a case of I'll do it this side so you can see it's a case of just folding it back and cutting. Nice clean sharp second tiers obviously. And then we'll lay it into the truck. Now while the weather stays as it is at the moment the will grow back up again oops I get those it will grow back up again for use into the autumn but it will soon die back just chop it off right, I'll just finish this off and then I'll show you the finished job now that's the the mint cut back as you can see we've got a really good trunk full I should take this into the courtyard and put it in a basin with some nice fresh rainwater in. We've got quite a lot this morning so I can soon put some in. Because we cut it back I've also done another pot full for her. We'll leave this one now in the greenhouse and we'll keep it going for as long as possible so we've got fresh mint to cut at and hopefully there might just be a little bit of fresh mint to put with the new potatoes at Christmas that would be a bonus. Now one of our subscribers have asked us how we make and the measurements of the frames for our mesh tunnels. Now Diane's going to put a link to the video in the drop down box so you'll be able to see how we do it. It's Friday today, so that'll be about it this week. Thank you for all you people who are subscribing to us. We do appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I certainly just enjoyed that big shower of rain. I was ready for some rain. 
and hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.